What do you say to voters who have concerns about your capabilities to serve? I just won two club championships, not even senior, two regular club championships. To do that, you have to be quite smart mm -hmm. and you have to be able to hit the ball a long way. And I do it. He doesn't do it. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. He challenged me to a golf match. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. Look, I'd be happy to have a driving contest with him. The reason I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. And, and well, by the way, I told you before, I'm happy to play golf if you carry your own bag. Think you can do it? He's a six handicap of all. I was an eight handicap. Yeah. Eight. Never. But I have, you know, how many? How, I've seen you swing. I know you swing. Well, I'll be honest. I'm sure they could both beat me at golf. But that was only one of the unusual highlights of tonight. And in this video, we're going to look at the communication practices both Trump and Biden used to make this debate as odd as it was. Even look at the walkouts. Now, please we have the Biden and Trump walking States, onto the Joe stage Biden. with rock music, making it seem like they're about to walk away from an exploding building or into a bank they're about to rob. And please welcome, and please welcome the 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump. And as they walk out, both looking like the main characters, there's no pleasantries exchanged, no hey Donald or hello Joe. Rather, it's straight into questions. Two moderators who are asking all of the questions. This debate was not like those in the past because it wasn't created or monitored by the typical debate convention. Due to that, there was new rules. Each candidate only had two minutes to answer a question, one minute to respond to the other candidate. They were gonna mute mics when the candidate was not supposed to be talking. They couldn't bring notes. They had a notepad and a pen, some water at the lectern so they could take notes. There were commercial breaks, but they weren't allowed to talk to their campaign. So whenever we think about these rules even going into the debate, that automatically sets up communication patterns. We'll talk more about the implication these rules have as we get a little bit later onto the video. But first, let's start with Donald Trump. What did Trump do in this debate that made it unusual or memorable were there trends and patterns that we saw. First off, let's talk about not what he said, but how he said it. He did a lot of gesturing. I'll show you a short clip. Enemy ...that we've ever seen just prior to COVID and even after COVID. It was so strong that we were able to get through COVID much better than just about any other country. But we spurred, that tax spurred. Now, when we cut the taxes, as an example... Gesticulating a ton. He's using that right hand. His left hand stays down the whole entire debate, which did stand out to me. I don't really know what to make of that, other than he's just supporting himself. The other nonverbal thing that we can look at, very reactive. Trump does not hide his facial expressions. For instance, let's watch this exchange. Yeah, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if, we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump. Meanwhile, Biden's nonverbals were much more subdued. There were a few moments where he had some active pointing going on, but for the most part, he stayed within the frame of his lectern. Rather, one nonverbal trend that I saw throughout the whole entire debate was he spent a lot of time looking down. At times, it was during moments of thought, but at other times, it almost seemed as if there were resignation happening. I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare because all of these people are coming in. They're putting them on Medicare. He spends a lot of time looking at his lectern. I had mentioned that Trump was reactive while Joe Biden was talking, but Joe Biden was also fairly reactive while Trump was talking. They want everybody, and look, I have the, I have the biggest heart on the stage, I guarantee you that, and I want one of the best, okay? And if I'm given another four years, I will be the best. I think I'll be the best. Nobody's ever created an economy like a regular club championships. To do that, you have to be quite smart, and you have to be able to hit the ball. <laughs> and what's funny is... On the other side of the reaction, one common trend that we see throughout this debate 
is Trump's self-assuredness. Now, I'm sure this is not new to this debate, but it does add a dynamic to a debate that makes it more of a spectacle and something that we don't think about. But oftentimes winning a debate is not about making the most logical point. Sometimes it can mean being the most fun to watch. And I think that is something Trump's team is aware of. I know that oftentimes he says things that are out of pocket or really not the best things to say, but what they do is they get eyeballs. And in this moment, Trump is using that self-assuredness and maybe I'm giving him too much credit. Maybe he's not even thinking about this, but the result is that people talk about it and people think about it. And similar to Joe Biden, they react to it. For instance, here Trump is referring to himself in the third person. Almost every police group in the nation from every state is supporting Donald J. Trump. What stuck out most to me was the amount of personal attacks within this debate. Both candidates spent a lot of time calling one another the worst president ever. Worst president in history, 159 presidential scholars voted him the worst president in the history of the United States of America. He is the worst president. He just said about me because I said it. Uh, <laughs> That's only one instance of the back and forth of them calling the worst president ever. It had to have happened dozens of times. Biden telling Trump he had the morals of an alley cat. Trump telling Biden, I'm sure he doesn't even know what he's saying. The speed at which this devolved into a ton of ad hominems surprised me. Whenever you look at the basic of rhetoric, you have your ethos, your pathos, and your logos. Ethos being the credibility of the speaker. If you can attack the credibility, if you can weaken the credibility of the speaker, what they say won't have as much impact. And that was definitely a priority of the Biden campaign. What made it even worse and what compounded this was it's true. There were many moments where Biden was stumbling on his words. The pacing of his answer was unusual. It was either slower or fragmented. There were many moments where he was looking for one word but couldn't find it, so he went with another word. There were many moments where he chose one word and mixed it up with the other and then went back and corrected it. For instance, million, billion, and trillion. It's better when he left office, and I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look. But I do believe that the muted mics helped. There were many moments where either one of them tried to interrupt one another, but they backed off because they knew they couldn't be heard. I also believe not having the live studio audience helped. And I believe it helped Biden the most because Trump, similar to a stand-up comic, is able to riff with the crowd. If he has a good zinger, the crowd laughs, it gives him more motive and more juice to keep going. Both of those ensured that the tension level didn't get too high, yet still the amount of personal attacks here made you wonder exactly what the goal of each campaign was. For Biden, it certainly was to attack Trump's credibility. For Trump, it certainly was to attack Biden's fitness or his lack of ability with the border or certain key issues. Overall, the different dynamics of their communication styles intriguing. For instance, Trump is full of self-assuredness due to that he uses a ton of absolutes. Whenever he's talking, he does have a lot of pitch and volume variation. That's something that Biden doesn't have. Trump will do a lot of gestures. Meanwhile, Biden doesn't. But Biden had a couple zingers. He talked to Trump about the Stormy Daniels thing, and he said, you have the morals of an alley cat. He went back and he said, you're the loser and the sucker to Trump. There are things that Biden's campaign is going to try and clip and use those, but throughout the majority of the debate, Biden seemed to be struggling with some of the words. It seemed like he was shopping for one and decided to go with another. There were moments where he would go back and try and replace one with one that he chose, I thought Biden did a better job at answering questions directly. I thought Trump avoided questions a bit more because he wanted to go back and pile on or compound something that was already said. I think when we look at the history of presidential debates, it matters a lot how you look on camera. For instance, JFK and Nixon. JFK won that election because of how good he looked on TV. 
He seemed cool, calm, and collected. Meanwhile, Nixon was sweating on the brow. He seemed a bit less ready for the cameras. And in this instance, I think Trump did more favors for himself with how well he appeared on the camera. Meanwhile, there were a couple of moments, be it Biden's nonverbals, looking down in resignation, stumbling with his words, that didn't help bring him favor in this campaign. I'm not a political expert. I'm not here to discuss policy. I tried my best to avoid policy. Rather, I'm fascinated by the communication. I'll be here for round two, presidential debate two. It'll be interesting to see how the campaigns prep and react to that, especially with what just happened. If you're fascinated with communication content so that we can not only watch and listen to this, but also learn from it, then be sure to subscribe. You can look at the rest of the channel. We've talked about Putin. We've talked about Biden. We've talked about Jason Kelsey and a whole bunch of different people. But I'd love for you to subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments.